Kids, um, if you would like, uh, Catherine and Jolyn next door are going to have an Easter movie for you. If you. So if you're under the age of, well, if you consider yourself a kid. <laughs> sit down, Stu. Sit down, Stu. <laughs> if you consider yourself, hey, Molly, no. Nah. <laughs> You can, you can feel free to head out there. Um, that will be great. Jess? Cool. So, yeah, they can head out there. I'm not... Cool. Uh, so, this morning, we're going to take a look at the Passover... And I think there's a bit of a PowerPoint as well to go along with it. Can anyone tell me, if I say Passover, what might be wrong with that picture? Sorry? I've been missed out. No? Lamb? Yep. That's good. Yep, yep, no it is. But what about the festival of Passover? The, sorry? The blood? Possibly. Thank you, thank you. Um, my lovely wife did this for me a couple of years ago, um, did this up, and I didn't notice until I was doing it this morning that the bread was actually bread rolls, not le- unleavened bread. But I'll explain that as we go through this morning, and, and rightly so. Uh, what Passover is, is Passover is a festival that the Jews used to celebrate year in, year out, because they would re- wanted to remember uh, what God had, do, had done. And basically, the history of Passover is this. They tried to kill us. The Egyptians tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. That's basically what it boils down to. Is when it, it was kind of like the, the way of God was if people, um, if something was to happen, there would always be a celebration that would come afterwards, and it always included food, and I'm always up for food. Um, and so, uh, why, why um, you know, we're a week before Easter, and, we, and predominantly within the church, we would celebrate the triumphant entry the week before uh, and, and I just wanted to take this opportunity. I felt this year, well, we, we've done it year in, year out, so why not do something a little bit different? And, and so we're going to look at Passover. And so if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to start from verse 5. Before I read that, so what we've got is we back... Many, many years ago, as Gavin said, that the, the, um, the Israelites are in uh, slavery in Egypt. And here God is. He's wanting to bring his people out from Egypt. And so here's his instructions to them. Uh, verse 5 says, The animals you choose must be a year old male without defect. And you will take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month. Uh, when the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames. I think you've got a picture. Top of the door frames where they eat the lamb. That night, that same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with the bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Down to verse 11. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both animals and people, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your house, and whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through to the seventh must be cut uh, cut off from Israel." 
And so what we have here are the instructions for the Israelite people uh, of what they're to do. They're to take the lamb they're to, or the goat. They are to slaughter it specific times. They're to take the blood. And what it was was that they were to put the blood on the top lentil and then on the doorposts. Um, and, and, and so when... Uh, the play, uh, sorry, when the spirit of death came, it would pass over the house wherever the blood was. This is pretty gruesome. Welcome to church, if you haven't been before. Um, <laughs> I always think about that when, when um, we do things like uh, dedications and, and we have families who come and now we're talking about blood and slaughtering animals and it's all good stuff. Um, stay, because we're going to be washed in the blood shortly. Are you washed in the blood? Oh dear, no. Um, so, there were 10 plagues in all that swept through Egypt, and nine of them didn't touch the Israelites at all. None of them uh, came close. But the 10th one was just going to come over the whole of Egypt. And so, therefore, um, uh, God gave the instructions through Moses of what they were to doing. We can see in Luke 22, verse 8, where the Passover then became a lasting ordinance that happened from year to year. And in Luke, we can see that Jesus himself was coming to the Passover. It says this in Luke 22, verse 8. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. What are we going to do this morning is this. I'm going to take uh, uh, this, this learning that I've learned. And, and, and one of the things that I would ask is that you understand that this is this is part of a puzzle. Um, it, there are many parts to the puzzle. Now, I may get a few details wrong. I do apologize. If you have done studied into the Passover, into anything, I encourage you, if there's something that's said from this stage, please come and talk with those who present because they would want to know if you know something different to them. We're actually okay. You know, it's okay to come and say. But what I've done is, um, if I can just have the lights up, is, is I've done a bit of uh, study into from the moment where Jesus, uh, from the moment where uh, the first Passover happened, and if you don't know the story, basically with all the firstborns dying, Pharaoh's son died, and therefore he let the people of uh, Israel go, and they left Egypt free. Um, and what I've done is I've done research into from that moment through the years, the rabbis, the teachers, they developed different traditions in their Passover meal that, that then became still today what Jewish people do every Passover. Because still today, Jewish people and Messianic Jews, that's Jews who believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, they still participate and have the Passover and I think that there's just something really special about this because there's elements that I'm going to talk about that just all align with Christ and still today there are many who don't understand it. So I've done a bit of a table setting of what I've understood the Passover to be like. Now, I'm not a Messianic Jew. I've never been to things. I only know what I've learnt. And so here we have this. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the different elements of the Passover. And we're going to take this opportunity to allow them and allow God to speak to us through these different elements. So I hope you're with me. Are you with me? Yeah. Good. Let's do it then. So from the moment... Jesus told, instructed his disciples to, to prepare the Passover. There's these different things that take place. And now in a more modern time, we're going to go through Passover together. So the first thing that would happen weeks before Passover was, was even going to happen, a spring clean would take place. And it was the, the um, duty of the wives or the lady of the house to do this cleaning. And all the men said, I mean, no, I not We've got to be careful. But what they did was the woman went and did the cleaning. And, and because the men were instructed that they were to check, and what they were cleaning for was any um, leaven. 
So anything that had breadcrumbs, anything that had yeast in it, any products got all hiffed out, and the house was basically clean from top to bottom, and everything was um, clean. What the man of the house was to do, he was to go through the house and to check the house that it was clean. If I say that, do you realize how, how good that might work? Like, I know that I walk through things and I don't see certain issues. Buckets of washing. Buckets of washing or, and so what the, uh, the woman did to make it easy for the men was this. They would take a little bit of the crumbs from the toaster, from the bread, <laughs> No, no, if it was more modern, you know. That's, so that what they would do is they would take it, if they would take crumbs of bread, and they would place it and hide it somewhere in the house. And the man was to go around, search the house, and find this. And if the wife or the woman of the house was f- nice to her husband, she would hide it year after year in the same place. <laughs> and what he would do is he would come with his mighty spoon and his feather He would scoop up the little bit of leaven into his spoon, wrap it in a napkin, and march himself down to the local synagogue where there would be a fire burning and throw it in, here declaring that his house was clean. And all the women just applauded as the man did that time. So that's the first part of the Passover. It starts weeks in advance of the actual meal. So there was the search for the leaven. We used the spoon and the feather to collect it and the napkin and wrap it up and burn it. See, leaven is a symbol of sin, for sin. In 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6 to 8, it says, Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So there's an element where the, the Jewish people today, when they do Passover, will clear the house of the leaven. So too, to us today, this Passover, may we look and see, is there any sin in our lives? Are there any crumbs that are starting to appear in our life that we need to come and maybe just sweep them away and deal with them and take them? The next thing was that they would have a book called the Haggadah. Uh, Hopefully my um, Hebrew is okay. The Haggadah. What this was was a special book that was used to retell the story of the um, of of the Exodus of of the part first Passover, and so that would be used throughout the evening. Jess, can uh, yes, you're not breastfeeding. That's good. Can you come, please? The next thing that would happen when we would come to the meal was that the woman of the house would be used to light the candle. I didn't prep you for this, so. You get to light my candles this morning, and as you're lighting, you get to read this. <laughs> Where that? Yeah, that. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to kindle the festival lights. Thank you. That was lovely. And so that and so would start the Passover. At the Passover table, you will see that they're seated and that they would have cushions. Back in Jesus' time, the cushion would be on the ground and would be next to the table because the tables were a lot lower. But nowadays they still have the cushion at the table because Oh, just sat on the mic. That's that's not good. Because in the first Passover, they were told to stay, uh, to eat it standing, their, their shirts tucked in, uh, their staff in their hand, because they didn't know when Pharaoh was going to let them go. 
So they had to be ready. But after the fact, they realized that, so what this represented was the first Passover they were slaves, but now the pillow represents that they are free. And so they still, to this day, will have the pillow at their seats when they eat the Passover because um, it represents the freedom that God bought, which is pretty cool. Oh. The next part, and those who have been uh, with us when we've done a Passover meal in the room next door a couple of years ago, will know that we have a, gr- uh, a cup. And what this has is over, f- over the uh, course of the Passover meal, you would have four drinks. And you would fill your cup each time. And the first cup that you would celebrate would be the cup of sanctification. This is the cup of freedom. That, that this was them celebrating that God had brought them out from their burden. So we celebrate the cup of freedom, of deliverance. The next would be the Seder plate, and I've got a Seder plate uh, in the picture. Thank you. Which the Seder plate now represents as a plate Uh, that has different compartments, a little bit like the one I've got here, uh, for the different elements of the Passover meal. And Seder in Hebrew uh, means order. Got to remember. It means order. And so on this Seder plate, you would have the different elements that you would have during your time. I'm missing one element, the salt water. Can you grab me some salt water, please? The first on the Seder plate was the parsley, or uh, they would use um, any green leafy vegetable. Thank you. And this was to represent the hyssop, the, the life. This represents life. We know that this is alive when it grows. And so it was to represent life. And what uh, we would do as part of the Passover is we would take that which represents life and we would dip it in a solution of salt water, which represents the tears. We rem- re- uh, To remember the life in tears. To remember the life, uh, remembering that all of these elements are to remind us of what it was like being in slavery and now coming out of slavery into freedom. And so it was to remind us of a life of tears. And when they combined together, uh, they would remind us of the bitterness and sorrow of slavery, of being slaves. The next part would be the horseradish. This is delightful stuff if you've ever had it. Um, And what horseradish was to do was to be the bitter herbs. This was to remind us also of the pain and the suffering of uh, slavery. um, And what they would do was take a piece of the matzah, which is the bread, the unleavened bread, and they would dip it in. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Um, They were going (laughs) to dip it in and take it, and it would bring tears to their eyes. Again, reminding them of the life of bitterness and sorrow. In Matthew, I'm just going to grab my Bible. In Matthew chapter 26. Uh, verse 21. I'll start at verse 20. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table of the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, uh, to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. 
Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand in the bowl, into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not yet been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, you have said so. And so what we see is that we're in the middle of the Passover meal. And here, Jesus as the rabbi, as the one who would be leading this time through, takes the bowl and says, the one who betrays me is going to be the one who takes and dips in the bowl. And here we have this moment. But the funny thing is, is that they would have each dipped in the bowl. And we read of the accounts of how they all in their own way betrayed Jesus. Moving on. After you've had the lovely horseradish, you would then have, and I've just got apples here, but there's a lovely apple mix that um, we, we, uh, you make up for a Passover meal uh, that has, um, it's really sweet. It's, it's um, sugary, it's, it's got nuts in it, and it's just delightful. And what this represents, and it was quite a fine paste, and what it represents is you would then take your matzah, your bread, and you would dip it in the apple mixture. And what this would represent is the mortar that they would use to build the bricks. But it was sweet. And you, so some may say, well, well, why do we have the bitterness, but we, we're still in savory, but we have the sweet. And what the sweet was to represent was them recognizing that freedom was coming. Deliverance was coming. So in those last days, as they saw the plagues happening around them, they began to see that God, their deliverer, was taking action and was bringing them out of bondage. And so the apple mixture represents the slavery coming to an end. There's also a hard-boiled egg. And the egg represents new life. And so here... That on their Seder plate, they have the sign of new life. Next would come the telling forth. This is four questions that the, four, the younger member of the family would recite, and it would be in Hebrew, but I wasn't uh, brave enough to try and memorize them. But basically, the questions were this. On all other nights, we eat uh, leavened foods and matzah. Why on this night only matzah? And the rabbi, the father, would explain. And this is, this is a time of teaching. This is a time of, of being able to disciple. On all other nights, we eat all vegetables. Why on this night, maroa, ma, which is the bitter herbs. Oh, sorry, bitter herbs. On all other nights, we don't dip even once. Why on this night do we dip twice? And... They would go and use this as a teaching exercise. On all other nights, we eat sitting upright or reclining. Why on this night do we just recline? And so this opportunity of this culture to be able to embrace the significance of all that's taking place. The next thing that would happen is you would take another cup and you would take your plate or your napkin and you would dip your finger and each time remembering the plagues remembering the 10 plagues. And this was to remember the rescue, how God delivered his people. And it, for those who remember it, it's blood, frogs, lice, flies, cattle plague, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and then death of the firstborn. There was an importance for the unleavened bread. Um, and there's a picture, um, I think we have a picture of unleavened bread. Uh, actual unleavened bread not just wraps from the supermarket, um, but unleavened bread has, uh, is um, specifically pierced so that it does not rise. And it's got like these, almost these stripes on it. And it's significant because they didn't want the bread to rise because they wanted to be able to eat it quickly when they left Egypt. And it was striped and pierced in the making process. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, But he was pressed for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. And so here we see that the bread that 
still today, Jews will, will go and get matzah, the unleavened bread with the holes and the stripes, points to Jesus. The next part of the Passover is probably one of my favorite parts. Um, there's a mazatash, mazatash, and this is a bag. Next slide, thank you. Which has three pockets in it. And before the Passover, you would put a piece of the matzah, the bread, in each of the pocket. And at this point in the Passover, what would happen is that the father would take it and the, and, um, the, the masatash represented unity. Now, rabbis would be uh, in, in debate around what uh, unity it meant. There were different uh, theories of this. The first is the patriarch theory, that it represented the unity of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was the father, uh, the fathers, the patriarch of the Israelites. Next was the, it was the unity of worship of priests, Levites, and the people of Israel. But today, I suggest that it represents the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because what happens, and there's no, as I research this, there's no real understanding as to why they would do this, but it's just what they've done, is what they do is they take of the middle piece, Father, Son, they take of the middle piece, and they break it in half, and then they go and they wrap it up. Next slide, thanks, AJ. They wrap it up in the afikoman, which is this. And what the father will then do is he will go and hide the afikoman in another room for later in the meal. So then if you're part of a Passover meal, uh, then it would be the meal time. And normally it was a big spread. It was a time of celebration. There was lots of food. And then after the meal, the father would say to the kids, all right, now go and find the afikoman. And the afikoma means it comes later, or in some translations, it's called the I came, the afikoma. And so what they do is the children go and run and find the afikoma, and they come and they bring and they open it back up. And the significance of this is this, that Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. He was wrapped, sorry, first then buried, and after three days, he rose from the dead and he came back. And then the father does this. He gives 30 pieces of silver to the child who found the afikoma. 30 pieces of silver represents the price to be free. And so today, still within our communities, our Jewish communities, they have these significant things that for us, disciples of Jesus Christ, we go, wow. Or like I just, I just go, wow, at these things, at the, at the connection between what, what God has done and what he's doing. And then what he does from the afikoman is he takes it and he takes it. And we can read it in verse, Luke verse 22. After the cup of thanksgiving, uh, sorry, after taking the cup, he said, uh, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, took the bread and broke it, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So before he takes a cup, he drinks. This was the cup of blessing and redemption that came, the cup of new covenant. Jeremiah 31, verse 34, uh, 
Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke my uh, covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put the law on their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor to, or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. And here, In the midst of the Passover meal that the disciples would have been sitting with Jesus at, they then recognized that what he was saying and all the prophecies that were said before were coming true before them. And then at the end of the Passover, we have the cups of praise. This is the praise, the redemption yet to come. And at this time in the Passover meal, uh, psalms from Psalm 113 through to 118 would be used to sung to sing praise to God. Folks, this morning Jesus was the Passover Lamb. He was the very blood that was placed. And as we recognise where God instructed the Israelites to place the blood, was on the top lintel and on the the doorposts, representing what cross they might as he took of the blood put it on who knows that we don't always have paint left over when we've brushed something take a bit more take a bit more and folks today as we have placed the blood of Jesus on our lives he has come so that we may have life and life not as slaves to anything but to have life in fullness. So we no longer need to be standing ready, waiting to be rescued. We've been rescued. And we can leave that place. Hun, can you wheel those trolleys out for me? Oh. <coughs> Stu, can you? Oh, thanks, guys. In a moment, we're going to take an opportunity to, to partake in some Passover together. We've just got a couple of the elements. I've got some on a plate, individual plates, so that we meet requirements. We've got individual plates. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to take of a plate. Um, Some have multiple um, pieces of uh, matzah, unleavened bread. And what I want to do is encourage you that if you've got kids, I encourage you to go and get your kids, and if you would like, and bring them and do this with them incorporate and do it with them. Take this opportunity to take of the bread, uh, sorry, to take of the parsley that remembers our old life, that we dip it in the salt water and we eat it. And it reminds us of, of what it was like before we came to know Christ. What our life was like before Jesus came and rescued us. And then what I encourage you to do is then to take of the bread and to remember Christ this morning. His uh, his body broken for us. His blood that was poured for each one of us so that we are no longer um, slaves, but we are now free men and women. And then after that, we're going to celebrate with some lamb and some buns. Yeah, so, so... Yes, thank you. So what you can do is we'll space these out a little bit. But I ask if you can grab one, and then when you go back, to take it back to your seat, but also just grab a, a drink on the way past as well. Um, those who are gluten-free, we have got gr- gluten-free option as well. They may gluten no. um, So if it looks like bread, please leave it for the gluten-free people in our room today. Is that clear what we're doing this morning? Yeah? Clear as mud? Good. Let me pray. Father, we just pray that as we take of this time, as we take some time this morning to uh, remember that you were Jesus, our Passover lamb, that you died to set each one of us free. And Father, I just pray that this morning we take of this element 
uh, of parsley and salt water to remind us of the life that we had before you. To remind us of the things that you kept us in bondage. To remind us of the things that, that kept us chained in darkness. And Father, I pray that if there is still darkness, if there is still fear in people's lives, that as they take this and as they remember it, even vividly of this moment, Father, that then as they take of your body that is represented by the bread and they take of your blood that's represented by the grape juice, black currant juice, Father, I pray that you would bring supernatural healing to them. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to come as the song plays. I invite you to come, grab a plate, go back to your seat, grab a cup and head back to your seat. And just take this time. If you've got kids, please feel free to go grab them next door and just talk to them. Make this an opportunity to say why you're doing what you're doing. May God bless you as you partake this morning and this time. That they leave a chair spear. There's a spear seat placing at the table. Um, and this is to uh, be for Elijah, to, who would be the messenger before the Messiah would come. And, um, and still today they leave it empty because they think the Messiah hasn't come. And, and I, I just want us to take an opportunity this morning that, that their eyes would be open. That, that, let's just pray. Father, th- this year, that their eyes would be open to Jesus the Messiah. Father, that the Elijah that was to come to declare the way of the Lord came and and was John the Baptist who prepared the way for you, Jesus. I just pray for each of us, Father, that this morning, from the youngest to the oldest, that this has been a may have been just uh, another thing to do, but Father, I pray that your significance would just come through. And that, Father, as we continue to celebrate together, as we continue to have um, the buns and, uh, and lamb together, I just pray, Lord, that you would just bless it to our bodies. That, Father, eating the lamb, we would, rep- we would remember you, our Passover lamb. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all the saints said, amen, amen. God bless you, family. Um, can you just have a look who's on take note? Is it me? Is it, is it Sarah? Could be Sarah. Sarah, take note.